G'day guys, welcome to episode 39 of Ask Jack D. Today I talk about the three core things you need to do if you want to build an online following, as well as at the very end, I'll let you in on a little milestone or a large milestone that the Entourage have achieved lately as a result of five years of incredibly hard work and as a result of this relationship that absolutely touches our hearts and souls every day. Hey guys, welcome to episode 39 of Ask Jack D. Today we are taking a question from Instagram, Jen Shirley, who says, Hey Jack, I've been watching your show. Thank you, Jen. Really appreciate you watching, viewing, contributing, asking questions. Wanted to know how do you build an online following as a startup when you're starting from zero? Really good question, Jen. Really good question because as a startup, it doesn't matter if you're starting from zero online, right? Because a lot of the stuff that we can do online to build following, win customers, engage customers, have repeat customers, a lot of the stuff is free or next to free, right? That's the beauty of the internet. It's leveled the playing field. In fact, I think it's actually given earlier stage smaller businesses an advantage over larger businesses because we can talk how we want, we can engage with consumers, we can iterate according to the dialogue and the engagement that we get. Whereas larger businesses, there's so much legal and bureaucratic and management sign-off stuff that like it takes them three months to put up one Facebook post and then another three months to be able to comment on it. They can't move as fast as we can uh, in the smaller sort of earlier stage high growth business arena. So it's actually a massive advantage, right? The way I think um, of online strategy is really three things, right? Number one, get them to know you, meaning getting your audience to know you. Business at a fundamental level is an is a exchange of value, right? We provide value, somebody else pays us or pays us with their attention or pays us with a like or whatever. So it's often an exchange of value. One of the things that we can do as entrepreneurs now using online is to add value to our audience before they buy from us. So what does your audience come to you for? What do they want to learn? What do they want to know? What's the outcome or the effect that they're coming to you for? And how can you turn that into content that gives them those results or those emotions or helps them achieve those values before they actually buy from you? So is it videos? Is it Facebook posts? Is it blogs? Is it checklists? Is it photos? Do they just do they come to you because they want to laugh? Do they come to you in the case of Red Bull because I want to feel like an adrenaline junkie? So if you post a video of someone doing this awesome sort of skydive, then I'll feel like an adrenaline junkie, right? What is the content that you can put out there online that gives them the feelings, the emotions, maybe even the outcomes and the results that they would come to you for? Number one, know you. Number two, join you. It really baffles me how many entrepreneurs have websites these days without an option to opt in, right? Very few people will come to your website and buy in the first instance. There has to be something like front and center. When I land on your homepage that says sign up or join us or join the movement or join the community or join the something, not subscribe to my newsletter. Zero of us in 2015 want more newsletters. Newsletters are boring, we've got too many of them, don't call it a newsletter. It needs to be something about joining your community. For entourage, it's join the movement, right? Give me a name, uh, you know, first name, second name, an email address, a city, if that's gonna be relevant for you and your business, and it's join us for free, right? Something that enables them to opt in, something that enables them to join you. The principle called recency and frequency that, that dictates this. When a consumer makes a buying decision, the organization or the individual that are front of mind for that person are the individual or the organization that have contacted them the most recently and the most frequently, right? So when they join you, when they opt into your database, they opt into your community, you have permission to send them emails, you have permission to transfer them onto Facebook, to Instagram, whatever it might be. We now have permission, right? We're in an era of permission-based marketing as opposed to interruption-based marketing. Permission to build recency and frequency and communicate with them. And again, we're not necessarily selling all of the time, right? I think you should give, 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 give. And for every six times that you add value or eight times, work it out for your audience. But you know, for every six times, eight times, then we might invite them to buy something. But it's really building a relationship, getting them to join you, getting permission to achieve recency and frequency, continuing to add value and eventually and occasionally asking them to buy something. And then the third thing, know you, join you. The third thing is love you, right? Once they've joined your database, think about what do they wanna hear? What do they wanna achieve? What do you know that you can share with them that will make them go, wow, how can you add value to them that just by being in your database, being in your community, their life improves just as a result of doing that, right? Business is just about relationships, right? Whether it's an investment discussion, whether it's uh, with you and your team, whether it's your customers, whether it's the people that aren't your customers yet that are on your database, it's all a game of relationship. And relationships need to be a place and space that we as individuals come to give, 
right? So b the business world is obsessed with, um, you know, marketing and how can I get more people to buy and how can I get more conversion, all that sort of stuff, as we should be. But that shouldn't be what we lead with. It needs to be a place and space that we come to give. So get them to know you by releasing heaps of content that speaks to the hearts and minds of your audience. Get them to join you in a way which is free, cost them a name and an email address, maybe some more information if it's gonna be relevant. And number three, get them to love you. Build a genuine relationship with your audience. That will be the biggest and most valuable asset you can build as an organization. On that, I have some exciting news about the entourage. We recently, speaking of online presence, we recently crossed the line of a hundred thousand members um, in our online entourage community, right? We've been around for five years now. Um, you know, it's our vision to push civilization forward by enabling more people to live on purpose. We film stuff like this every day. We're releasing blogs like crazy. We're constantly on social media. We're constantly trying to build a community and an army uh, of people who are, you know, know what their purpose is, are living in alignment with that purpose and going toward the actualization of the highest vision that they hold for their lives. We think entrepreneurship uh, does change the world, will continue to change the world, and the world needs now, more than ever, really strong leadership from people like you. So we've just crossed 100,000. That's 100,000 people, right? It's 100,000 individuals. It's 100,000 people with dreams and aspirations and fears and people that wanna go out and shake shit up and change the world and make the world a better place. So thank you guys for that. Thank you for continuing to watch Ask Jack D. I look forward to chatting in the next one.